Good morning everyone. I am Tanu and welcome to my channel. So today I am going to discuss a very important topic which is Canada Child Benefit. Now this is a benefit that government of Canada has provided to all the people living in this country who has children less than 18 years of age which is the government pays you to raise your children. That's amazing, right? So let me get straight to it. So what are we going to discuss today? I'm going to cover who can apply for Canada Child Benefit, how to apply, when to apply. I'm going to show you how you can calculate the CCB amount that you're going to receive and then what are the other benefits that are included along with Canada Child Benefit. All right, so what is a CCB? The Canada Child Benefit, also called a CCB, is a tax-free monthly payment made to eligible families to help raise their children under 18 years of age. And this is administered by CRA, which is the Canada Revenue Agency. Now, these benefits are completely based on income levels. What does that mean? So the higher your income, the lower the benefit you get and lower the income, the higher the benefit you get. And this is called adjusted net family income. So the CRA basically calculates the net family income, which means you and your spouse's income put together. And whatever the total amount is, is used to determine the eligibility of your benefit amount. So that's how it works. And that is why it is very important that you file your taxes every year. The CRA picks up the amounts from the taxes that you filed and that is how they determine the eligibility for every year. So whether you have an income or you don't, please do file your taxes if you want to continue getting these benefits from the government. So now who can apply for CCB? To become eligible to receive CCB, you need to live with the child. That is, the child has to reside with you and has to be under the age of 18. It cannot be possible that the child is living with grandparents or relatives and you're applying for the benefit. No, that cannot be the case. Next thing. So the government of Canada considers mother to be the primary caretaker of the child and considers the mother to be responsible for the upbringing of the child. And that's why... It's the mother who has to apply for CCB. Now, the father can also apply for CCB, but then you would require additional documents in that case, basically a consent from the mother, or you know, in situations where uh, parents are separated and the father has the custody of the child. So those are some complicated cases and those require additional documents. Next thing is, you must be a resident of Canada. So when I say resident of Canada, permanent resident, citizen. Temporary residents such as people living here on work permit need to complete 18 months of stay in the country and then you can apply for CCB from the 19th month and going forward. Again, you need to file taxes to be eligible to continue getting the benefits. All right, so now let's get to the process of applying CCB. I'm going to discuss when can you apply CCB and how can you apply CCB. So to answer the when, as soon as you meet all the eligibility criteria as discussed some time back, you can just go ahead and apply for CCB. How to apply for CCB? So there are two methods. First is online through my CRA account and the second one is by mail. Now, this is the most preferred method for newcomers because you've just landed and you don't yet have a CRA account for yourself. So this is the easiest and the fastest way to apply for CCB and start getting the payments as soon as possible. I'll however quickly just tell you how you can apply online through my CRA account. So you need to create your account and log into my account. Go to apply for child benefits section. Confirm your contact information, marital status and citizenship status, which will basically be permanent resident in the case of newcomers. You need to add your child's name, gender, date and place of birth. Review the application, make sure all the information is correct and then submit your application. If you get back um, any message from CRA asking to submit additional documents, you need to go to submit documents in my account and then 
just submit or upload whatever documents are required. Once that is done, the process in time for payments will be any time between six to eight weeks. Next, coming to the method of by mail. So there are two forms that needs to be filled out, forms RC66 and forms RC66SCH. Once you've done filling the forms, these are the documents that are required to be attached. First, the birth certificate of your child, COPR of the child and the parents, passport copies of the child and the parents. If you have already rented a house, then the lease agreement. If not, you can provide phone bill, gas bill, electricity bill, whatever is available. Why this is important? Just to prove that you are a resident of Canada, this is important. Next, driver's license. So, you know, most of us uh, get a driver's license done as soon as we land here. So even if you've given G1, you get your card within one or two weeks. So you can take a photocopy of your driver's license and provide not necessary of both the parents, even either of the parents work. Next is letter from the daycare or school indicating child's home address and contact information on file. Now, all these documents are provided to support that you are actually residing in Canada and that is why you are applying for this benefit. Now, this is not a mandatory step. I know of many friends who have not provided any letter from the daycare or school because the children stay at home and still they are receiving the payment. So this is not a mandatory step at all. The last one is bank statement. This is preferred. Again, you know, this is a very strong proof that you are living in Canada. You have a bank account and there are uh, transactions happening in your account. So review all the documents, check that everything is correct and then courier your application along with the documents to the tax center that serves your area through Canada Post. The processing time for payments will be any time between 10 to 12 weeks. Canada Post easily operates from any shopper's drug mart. So you can walk into your nearest shopper's drug mart and look for where Canada Post is, submit the documents and you can let them know which is the nearest tax center that you want to send the documents and just courier it. Everything should be done very quick and easily. So now I'm going to show you everything that we've discussed in the video till now and how you can browse all of that information online. So I've typed Canada Child Benefit. I'm going to get inside this website. So this is the Canada government website which describes everything about Canada Child Benefit. You can see all the sections who can apply, how to apply, how much you'll get, the payment dates, you know, how you can keep getting your payments and how you can contact CRA. So just get inside and read everything in detail you'll get much better understanding for now i'll just quickly get into the apply section we have already discussed when to apply and the process of how to apply so i'll get into by mail and here is our form rc66 i'm going to click on this here it is so if you see the first two lines it says once you apply for Canada Child Benefit, all the other benefits, that is GST, HST credit, the Climate Action Incentive Payment, any other provincial or territorial programs by CRA, for example, if you live in Ontario, your child will be eligible to get Ontario Child Benefit as well. You know, provided you meet the eligibility criteria, you also get the trillion benefit once you are able to um, submit the Canada Child Benefit application. Okay, now let's get into the details of the form. So step one is filling up your information. Now, one important point here is it is recommended that the mother fills in the information because like I said, mother is considered to be the primary caretaker of the child. So you know, step one should be mother's information, mother's SIN number, first name, last name, date of birth, language of correspondence, phone numbers. Next thing is mailing address. So wherever you're reciting, just make sure you're providing the address here. Then it says, have you moved from a different province or territory within the last 12 months? Yes or no, whatever is applicable. And then the date. 
Now, home address, same as mailing address. If it's the same, just check mark. If it's different, you need to provide the other address here. Step three is your marital status. So married or, you know, whatever is applicable, just check mark that. And then enter the date. So basically, you need to provide, like if you're married, you need to provide your marriage date here. Now, if you selected married or living common law, then the sin number of your spouse. In most cases, this is the father. So, sin number of father, again, first name, last name, date of birth, and all the other details. Step four is your citizenship status. So, have you been a Canadian citizen for the last 12 months? Of course, it's no in case you're a permanent resident, right? Uh, actually, this will not be applicable. It's going to be no for permanent residence um and you know that is why you have to fill up rc66 scs so it says if you answered no to either of the questions here you have to fill out this form yeah so for people like us who are permanent residents that's why we fill two forms step five newcomer or returning resident of canada this is what we have to fill in. So within the last two years, did you become a newcomer to Canada or return after an absence of at least six months? Yes, we are a newcomer to Canada in the last two years, right? So you fill up, you read the questions, you fill up the form, and then you move to step six. Now it's going to ask information about your children. And this is where it actually explains primary responsible for care and upbringing of the child. It explains the definition of that. And then it explains what's the definition of shared custody. Okay. And now coming to child one information. Again, basic details, first name, last name, gender, date of birth, city of birth, province or territory of birth. So if you're from India, you need to write India. Does the child live with you all the time? Yes, of course. This is a very important question, right? And if yes, enter the date or, you know, mostly it's since birth so you can just say since birth okay and you can just ignore the rest of the questions here moving to step six child to information now if you have two children fill in the information again and if you just have one child or your child information ends in step five moving ahead step seven is just signature so your signature date your spouse's signature date and now let's see what are the documents that you need to attach along with this form. So like we discussed before, since we answered no to the citizenship question in step four, we are going to fill in the next form, which is RC66SCH, right? Same goes, you know, since we answered yes in step five, we are going to fill in the form RC66SCH. What are the other documents? So proof of birth for the child birth certificate and then uh, the child started living with you more than 11 months ago so what else can you give so basically this is where you know it states all the documents that you can give and then these are the examples of the documents so like you must have seen i've mentioned we need to give a birth certificate and then you know passport of the child and the parents just to be on the safe side then as proof that you reside in canada you have to provide photocopy of at least three documents. So this is where, you know, you can provide the lease agreement or if you have rent receipt or if you have any of the household bills like gas, electricity, telephone, driver's license, car insurance, whatever is applicable, right? So um, in my case, I was not able to provide all the three documents. I just provided lease agreement and my husband's driver's license. I could not provide any of the household bill because my rent includes all of the uh, like it, it includes electricity, hydro and everything. So I did not pay anything separately. So I just had lease agreement and my husband's driver's license. And that's what I provided. Now, examples of accepted documents to prove that you are the person who is primarily responsible for the care and upbringing of your child. This is where I said that, you know, a letter from the daycare or the school authorities indicating the child's home address. 
this is again not i will say not a mandatory step i did provide a letter uh, from daycare not exactly a letter basically when i enrolled my son in the daycare i did receive a service agreement so i just provided a copy of that but if you do not have not a problem at all i know of friends who did not provide this letter and are still receiving the benefits right so this is not mandatory so yeah these are all the documents and now you need to courier it where do you courier it so these are the addresses if you are living in alberta british columbia manitoba northwest territories and these places you need to courier it to winnipeg tax center people living in ontario new brunswick newfoundland and labrador nova scotia and prince edward island you need to courier it to Sudbury tax center and this is where I couriered as well for Quebec you have a separate tax center so this was form number one now quickly get to form number two this is status in Canada and income information let's quickly get into it so step one your information again preferably mother's information so sin number first name last name your spouse's sin number okay your spouse's first name last name now your residency status so we are newcomers okay so we are all permanent residents so enter the date or your spouse or common law partner became a resident of canada now this date is basically the landing date it will be on your copr you can check the date and have it here next thing is returning resident of canada so whatever is applicable you can provide here step three your citizenship or immigration status canadian citizen if you are a canadian citizen then you can write the date if not most of us are category b permanent resident now enter the date the status began again you know the landing date it's it should be on the copr the date when you became a permanent resident in canada and your spouse so you need to provide both the dates here you can ignore the other sections temporary resident is for people who are still on work permit and are eligible to apply for ccb after 18 months of stay so for them you need to fill in all these information now step four step four asks you about your income because that is how cra is going to determine the eligibility of the amount that you're going to get right so a is the year you became a resident of canada so let's say I, i'm going to take my example so i came here in 2022 so i'm going to write 2022 next they ask you to enter the income from jan 1st to the date you've become a resident of canada so i came on may 1st so i've entered the amount from Jan 1st to April 30th. Now, this is in Canadian dollars. So, whatever INR amount or, you know, whatever country's amount you've received, convert that into CAD and you can mention it here, yours and your spouse's both. And then it goes on, right? So, now you need to enter the entire year's amount before that year. So, let's say this is a 2021 year, Jan to December, your amount, your spouse's amount. Again, the year before that, your amount and your spouse's amount. So CRA is going to take in consideration all these amounts and then calculate the benefit that you're going to get. Last step, signature, your spouse's signature, and that's it. Now you just have to take these two forms, put in all the documents and courier it to the eligible tax center. Now coming to the last part, how can you calculate uh, the benefits amount so this is where it is child and family benefits calculator just go below click on i accept you need to fill in the tax year to estimate your benefits so it's 2021 for this year click on next residency status i live in canada territory i'm going to select ontario marital status married next how many children i'll go with one so your date of birth basically my date of birth let me just randomly select something um, then the spouse's date of birth again okay and then did you decide outside of census metropolitan city you know it, it was pre-filled as no i'm going to leave it 
like that because I don't understand what this is. Uh, click on next child information. So your child's first name, ABC, date of birth. I'll just take something. Is this child a qualified disabled dependent? So, you know, based on your child's status, you can click on the options, shared custody, yes or no. And then you click on add this child. So you see your child has been added here. Similarly, you can keep adding your child based on the number of children you have and then click on next. Once you do that, now they're going to ask you to fill in the estimated income for the last year. So in this case, it's 2021. Let me just fill um, 20,000 for myself, 20,000 for spouse. You can leave these two sections. Click on next. Just leave out all this section. Not important. Click on next. Um, I'll just click on no because I don't want to answer any additional questions here. Click on next. Okay. So see, this is the total estimated benefit amount based on whatever information I filled. So this is the annual amount. And then how are you going to get the monthly payments? So CCB, you're going to get this much. On entire child benefit monthly amount, you're going to get this much. So probably if your salary is less, this these amounts might increase, right? And if your salary is more, these amounts will decrease, right? Adjusted net family income. Okay. Based on this uh, information, the HST GST credit is going to be 191 and HST GST is a quarterly credit. CCB, Ontario Child Benefit, Trillium Benefit, and um, Ontario sales tax credit, these amounts come in monthly and HST, GST credit and climate action incentive payment come in quarterly. So once you go to this calculator and you fill in your approximately information, you will get a breakup of how much you can expect to get from CRA, right? So yeah, that's a lot of amount, guys. So you get CCB, you get OCB, you get Trillium Benefit, you get Ontario Sales Tax Credit, you get HST GST Credit and Climate Action Incentive Payment. And you do not have to fill separate forms to get these benefits. The moment you submit only the child benefit documents along with the so uh, supporting documents and you are approved, once a case is approved, you will start getting these payments. Yeah, so that is it. So that was all about Canada Child Benefit, how to apply, when to apply, what are the documents and forms to submit. Do let me know in the comment section if you have any additional questions and I'll be more than happy to answer and guide you with the entire application process. Um, we have started receiving the payments. So we landed here in May and applied in June. And I guess from August, we started receiving the payments. Um, I do not have a CRA account yet. So how do you get it? You get it in the form of a check. So every month I receive a mail with a letter mentioning how much amount amount I'm, go I'm getting this month along with the check so you just need to take the check and deposit in the bank so it's that easy uh, you can actually sign up for direct deposit as well i'm yet to do that that's pretty simple you can just go into the CRA account and create your account and you know register yourself for direct deposit and then you should just receive the amounts directly in your bank account Mm, so all the best guys and um, you know this is a huge benefit uh, from the government of Canada for raising and supporting a child in this new country and uh, you know I'm truly grateful for this benefit and um, I, I wish you all the best uh, in your new journey in Canada. If you like the video please like share comment and please subscribe my channel. I'll try to get to you with more such videos. Until then stay happy, stay healthy, spread love. Bye!